Rin seems a little sketchy. So what's happening right now? Hasaya's like, Yo, I can go with you. What's wrong? You're looking for Emmy? I can help. And Rin's like, No, no, it's okay. One of us has to stay here in case something happens. Don't be so ridiculous. Nothing even remotely interesting has happened since I came here, except that one guy who dropped a snow cone on his foot. Let me help you. I'm bored. So what is it? Rin's lips flatten tightly against each other into an almost perfectly horizontal line. Closes her eyes. Draws in a deep breath. When she opens her eyelids, the frighteningly stern look in her dark eyes takes me aback. Hisaya, you might not want to hear this, or maybe you do. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. And even if it did, you are not leading. Hisayo, you might not want to hear this, or maybe you do. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. And even if it did, you are not leaving me any choice. I'm having my period, and I need some help regarding that. However, I don't feel that our relationship is down on the level that I could allow you to pull my underwear down in the girl's toilet, even if you do offer to. That's why you should stay here while I go and look for Emmy. As blood rushes to my cheeks like the rising tide, my brain's trying to desperately search for an answer, but the only thing I can think of is how that was the most coherent thing I've ever heard come out of Rin's mouth during these four days I've known her. Uh, uh, yes. Not wanting to meet Rin's eyes, I turn my face aside, pretending I'm looking at someone's parents. From the corner of my eye, I see Rin turning on her heel and walking off without further ado. I feel like I want to go hide under a rock. I wonder how long Rin will be gone, or if she'll even return. God, that's, t that's lovely and terrifying at the same time. She does return eventually, appearing seemingly out of nowhere and staying back to where she was, next to my place. I'm back. She says it flatly, like my blunder never happened. I prefer to forget the whole matter as well, so I keep quiet. Time passes in standstill. The sun gleams from high above the main building. It hits me directly in the eyes, but I just squint instead of moving. First thing I thought was like, Oh no, Rin's shadow is coming out to attack us, the Heartless! Oh no, Kingdom Hearts! Okay, I'm done. In a bit, it becomes painful to keep my eyes open just a little. My temples start aching. Well, uh, my head hurts. I think the day gave me a headache. Can you believe it? Are you hungry? How is that related to headache? It's not, I ask because I am. Actually, hunger is related to headache, so... Her oblivious seriousness melts my irritation with its ridiculousness, and I find the corners of my mouth turning slightly upwards again. You know what? So am I. I'll go get some food for us. What do you want? My treat. Nah, it doesn't matter. Returning with the food, I give one portion to Rin, taking the other for myself, and we dig in without a word. Rin looks upwards, fork hanging out of the corner of her mouth. What are clouds? I always thought they were thoughts of the sky or something like that, because you can't touch them. Oh, uh, you thought like that when you were a kid? No, last week. Maybe because sometimes my thoughts feel like clouds. Fluffy, white, slow. Like the sky was in my mind. Like my mind was in the sky. Oh, the sky of your mind? The fault in our stars? Close your eyes and think of sky. You won't be able to think of anything else until you stop. Okay. <laughs> I try it. It works. Magic? Oh, the gathering. Opening my eyes, I see Rin studying me with her eyes. It feels uncomfortable because she doesn't say anything. I turn away. Clouds? Whoa, that's not Rin. Uh, clouds are water. Evaporated water. You know, they say that almost all the water in the world will at some point of its existence be part of a cloud. Every drop of tears and blood and sweat that comes out of you will be a cloud. All the water inside your body, too. Goes up there sometime after you die. Might take a while, though. Your explanation's better than any of mine. Well, it's because it's true. That must be it. I carry on eating the food before it gets cold. The wall offers a bit of blessed shade as the sun revolves around the dome of the sky. But the afternoon is already slowly making way for the evening, so our lunch becomes more of a dinner. Or liner, Or whatever the word is for a regular meal like this. Despite what I decide to call it, it certainly hits the spot. 
I haven't eaten a bit since forever. My appetite filled, I let out a satisfied sigh. Rin hasn't eaten all of hers, but seems to be done with her food as well. I lean back, taken in the atmosphere. The crowd is thinned already, but the activities are still going strong. Everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. And why not? It's warm. The kind of perfect summer day when it's hot, but not too hot for comfort. The sun will set soon. Time really has flown by. When you're a Sayo, we've been sitting here for six hours. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Do you want to do something else now? Oh, no, not really. Me neither. She adjusts her position and leans against the wall, and I follow her lead, relaxing my own body. For minutes on end, we sit there without saying a word. I'm trying to feel Rin's mood from her demeanor, the tension of her muscles, the tiny expressions fleeing on her face. It's no use. She's unreadable as always. The crowd swells to and fro. People happily chattering with each other. Very few people pay real attention to the mural, and even less to us. I fiddle with a few odd pebbles absentmindedly. The act of doing something just for the sake of doing something. The pinnacle of idleness. Inch by inch, the sun creeps lower and lower towards the tree line, changing the color of the sky close to the horizon from golden yellow to orange and red, as the moment of the sunset draws near. I feel like my stomach's filled with lead after eating so heavily, but the brick wall feels surprisingly comfortable against my back. I try to fight against the drowsy feeling that is overwhelming me, to no avail. I go sleepy time, sleepy sleepy nap nap. And then I wake up. With a start. A low boom reverberates through the school grounds. After images of bright sparks flash through my vision like stars. Something rises towards the sky from the direction of the sports field. A tall f tail, a tall, a tail of fire trails behind it until a burst of red and yellow flame lights the sky high above the school with another loud boom. Fireworks! Sudden flash of light against the canvas of the night sky awakens me to realize it's actually dark. How long did I sleep? I feel groggy. I can't feel my right arm. As I attempt to flex it, I realize why. Aww, Rin is leaning heavily against my shoulder, almost falling on my lap. Yeah, girl, get it. She's fast asleep, not even phased by the fireworks. Her mouth is slightly open and her eyes are peacefully closed, a sleeping, childlike face of the innocent. I shake Rin gently with my free arm, trying to wake her, but failing, moving her so that my other arm is liberated from its pinch. Rin's face twitches and her eyelids shut tighter as if to resist against waking up. She gradually opens her eyes, but keeps them half-closed, letting the light from the fireworks sneak just past her eyelashes so that her green irises mirror the bright flashes of the explosions. And it looks up at me, and frowns. Just a while longer, okay? Rin's voice is drowsy and slow, leaving her almost unintelligibly un muttered words hanging lazily in the air. It seems she's not entirely aware of the situation. Rin's head drops back on my shoulder and she leans against me with all her weight. She's snug eyed, trying to make herself comfortable, but make me feel very comfortable at the same time. I become intensely, almost painfully aware of Rin's warm body and the deep, peaceful movement of her chest against my arm, her breathing soon returning to the even rhythm. I can't help admiring her gift for sleeping, or the ease of mind of hers to use someone she has known for less than a week as a pillow. The rockets rise up to the sky one at a time breaking into flowers of red, green, and gold, accompanied by the oohs and the ahs of the audience. I try to push Rin's disconcerting proximity out of my mind. For what can I do about it? I just hope her short... What? What? I just hope her short wall really is that? What does that mean? One by one, the glittery bursts are born and die in a blink of an eye. How depressing, coloring the dark night sky into a constantly changing abstract painting. Abstract. I listen to the low booms, the explosions, and Ren's quiet breathing, trying to clear my own head of the post-awakening disorientation. Thankfully, just a while longer really proves to just be a while, as Ren stirs from her slumber and wakes up again before the fireworks are over. I fell asleep. She finally opens her eyes completely and blinks a few times. Well, uh, you fell asleep on top of me? Twice? You didn't like it? Oh, I mean, what? Well, yeah. Despite the inconclusive stammering, Rin sits upright, drawing herself away from me. 
I uh, well, well, you are heavy. It's a lie. She weighs next to nothing, but I have to get a jab back at her, even if it's under the belt. My mock protest fails to draw any reactions. Rin's attention is drawn upwards to the flashes of the fireworks. She seems hypnotized by the colorful play of the explosions. A slight tingling sensation goes up and down in my arm as blood starts to circulate again. It's unpleasant, but it helps me to get rid of this dizzy feeling. More and more rockets rise up to the sky, the bright colors of their explosions reflecting from the clouds. Both of us stare at the fireworks fisic, fix, v -v 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 fixedly through the canopy of the trees, enthralled by the show. We would get a vastly better view of the sky if we moved even a couple yards, but neither of us bothers to even suggest it. I really do like fireworks, even though looking at them makes me feel kind of sad, I think. It's like they want you to look at them so bad, they're so loud and bright, but when someone looks, they're already gone. It's like they were not even real. Well, uh, they are real, I can tell you that. All of this is uh, real, you know? Think about it, nothing really lasts for long. Even something like my life or yours is just a blink of an eye in the history of everything. Like one of those rockets. Poof. And we're gone. But we're here, aren't we? Yeah, this is reality. Rin sitting next to me. The loud bangs of the fireworks. The vast, unlimited sky. These things are definitely real. Even though they won't stay here forever. I feel warm inside. And I wonder if it's because Rin is so close to me, or just the feeling of being alive. I don't really know what I should say next. Oh, uh, it's alright. Maybe I'm just talking to myself. Well, you know, fireworks are pretty, but in the end, isn't it somehow silly to spend so much money on a fraction of a second worth of pretty sparkles? I don't know, I like sparkles. Rin rips her gaze off the still ongoing spectacle and leans backwards, looking at me with a repulsed face. Wow, I never expected you to be such a cynic. I did. I expected it. Uh, cynic is a pretty harsh word. Rather than that, I think of myself as a realist. Isn't a realist just the word for what a cynic calls himself? The final rocket goes out with a bang of silver and blue, leaving the grounds eerily silent for a moment until the crowd starts moving towards the main gate like a cattle herd. Moo! Whiffs of gray smoke drift towards the dorms from the sports field. The pungent, sulfurous smell of gunpowder is carried along. Feels like it sticks in my hair and clothes. Uh, was that it? I think so. I stand up and stretch my sore back. Sleeping against a brick wall wasn't such a good idea. Rin stands up as well and turns to face me with an expectant gaze on her tired features. Although she seems to have trouble focusing her eyes, she's looking straight at me. Something I feel has not occurred too often in the past week. Uh, I suddenly realized we've almost been on a date here, as if by accident. I mean, even if we did nothing, I got none. I got none. Blue balls. But it wasn't, so why is blush... Wow! But it wasn't, so why blood is rushing to my cheeks and my speech stammering? I don't know what I should say, especially since it seems Rin is waiting for me to say something, but luckily she solves my problem. Good night, Hasayo. She gives me one lingering look, measuring me from tip to toe, turns around on her heel and skips off, disappearing to the crowd. Oh, good night. I'm left standing there, giving my response to the cooling night air. Sigh. The festival turned out to be nothing like I expected. I ended up spending all day in one spot with Rin, even though neither of us agreed on nor suggested that we do anything. I just didn't have anything better to do, and evidently, neither does she. Rin's warmth lingers for a while longer in my body before disappearing to the falling night.
Stop being so cute! Damn it! Too cute! Too cute for you! Damn it! 